Jatropha has been around for a very substantial period of time. It has been used as a fuel before, as a fuel in lamps. Crude oil has been used in vehicles, although with only modest success. What we're doing is the first large-scale commercial cultivation of Jatropha, I believe, of anyone, and taking forward the biodiesel mandate with Jatropha in a very meaningful way. So it will give us a leading platform and give us a strategic key to our business, which is a low-cost, long-term supply of feedstock. We're planting in three main regions. We're planting in India, throughout Southeast Asia and into the southern part of China, and in the very southern bit of Africa. Um, as of about the middle of September, we have approximately 110,000 hectares under cultivation. Either we have planted it ourselves or we've got the rights to it. It's being planted in subtropical climates across a fair range of the world. Jutropha produces an inedible oil, and therefore, in terms of planting it, it's very much complementary to activities that are already going on in the countries in which we operate. It could be planted on marginal lands, it could be planted on non-arable lands, and therefore it's not speaking directly to the food supply, it's providing an incremental benefit. It's also providing a substantial number of jobs in areas where the rural poor don't have other means of employment. And of course, the big benefit of all of this is it's a source of alternative energy, and it's providing a means for energy self-sufficiency in the countries in which we're working, as well as creating some oil for export as well. And we imagine the split is, say, approximately 50-50. For Swaziland, biodiesel is a must and is the right route to go because we have the natural resources, that is the land, the rain, and it's just the one thing we could do to create jobs, to provide an import substitution, and to assist us with generating our own uh, diesel. At the moment, 100% of the fuel used in the country comes from outside. Uh, secondly, it's a renewable resource, so we, we can have it as much as we want for as long as we want. And I think for Africa as well, it, it will change the trend because this is one product that is required for technological advancement, the biodiesel, but the way it's produced, it uplifts the rural people's standard of living. So it's, it's what we need for this century to actually change the face of economic development, in particular the, the, the rural settings. At the moment we're planting with wild seed and it occurs naturally in all of the markets in which we work. Typically we won't transport that seed from one country to another because wild seed, wild plants occurring in one region are typically there because they're hardy and they survive well in that particular climate. But we're planting out that wild, wild seed in a very meaningful way and that's what's given rise to the 110,000 hectares we have in the ground now. But of course the key to the business isn't just the number of hectares planted, it's how much oil do you get from a hectare of land. And what we're doing is to invest very significantly into a crop science program that sits right at the front of the business. And that's all about identifying the best varieties of Jatropha, well-tempered, well-suited to the particular environment in which they're being planted, and to successively breed those crops going forward so that what we're putting in the ground in future years is not wild seed, it's specially chosen, specially selected seed suited to that climate and which should not only be hardy and long-lived, but should have improved yields. Jatropha is a tree. Typically on Jatropha you get a first meaningful harvest after two years and the tree is pretty mature after five to six years. In order to allow the tree to fruit, one needs to prune it fairly vigorously. With Jatropha well maintained, it will fruit well and it will have a shape and a type that's easy to access and therefore readily able to be harvested. So what that means on wild seed is when mature, after that five to six years, well maintained, well looked after, one should be able to get out a crop of, say, 1.7 tons per hectare. Of course, the big advantage is in the crop science program, and it's very early days. But if everything comes to be as the early predictions show, we should be able to improve oil yields so that we can deliver at least 2.7 tons per hectare in terms of crude oil. And that is a very substantial improvement from where we are with the wild seed. With the fact that the world is changing from a fossil fuel, to renewable energy sources, this, I think, is going to impact heavily. Looking at Swaziland, if we were to produce our own oil from biodiesel, which is possible, it will change the landscape completely. So instead of making rich 
those who produce the fossil oil and sell it to us, it will enrich and empower our people. And we're very grateful for, for D1 Oil for the role they've taken to interest us into this initiative, which otherwise was not there. It's changing areas that were, you know, were hopeless to areas of hope.